It's still early into 2024, but today on the channel, we got possibly the biggest and baddest figure of the year, Masters of the Universe, Mondo, Beastman. And the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run forever! channel for another Mondo Collectibles unboxing and review and today on the channel we got the latest and greatest through the door we got the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe Beastman but for all your Beastman needs man it was a timed edition you gotta go to Mondo Collectibles to get these of course after that you're kind of stuck to the aftermarket and eBay but occasionally Entertainment Earth has these using discount code Kyle you can save 10% all things over $79 do ship free. Got to get a deal out there. And this is going to be one of those all-timer figures here. You know I love a hairy bipedal creature. You know Beastman is a favorite of mine. But we've had a lot of big figures from Mondo. We've had some big uh, cats in Panthor and, of course, Battle Cat. Well, here we are today with Beastman. This is an exciting one for me. I love a big figure. I love a hairy bipedal creature. I love He-Man and the Masters Universe. I love Beastman. We're playing all the hits, every single one. It's the greatest hits album here, of course, on the channel today. But, of course, we're also going to do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see where it goes from there. Let's kick it off with the packaging. Packaging and art form in itself with Mondo. Very expensive figures, as we do know, but man, you get a lot of cool stuff with this, including the packaging design. Such a heavy figure. I mean, this is a massive, massive box. But there he is, swinging through the trees like a young ape man. Maybe a kink song, who knows? And there's a little Ghost of Skeletor. It kind of looks like a haunted Ghost of Skeletor right there. You got the Mondo logo down in the bottom looking really good. Masters of the Universe 1 6 scale figure. He beast man at the bottom there. It does say one six scale collection collectible figure Mondo on this side here. You got the He-Man logo. He-Man logo at the top, kind of a lime green color. UPC stuff like that on the bottom, all the warnings. Nothing too fun. And then on the back of the box, oh my gosh, a heavy box. We got a little bit of blurb. Let's read and see what it says about our old friend Beast Man. More sinister than man or beast alone, this hellish henchman is known for both his brute brawn and telepathic control over the dangerous wild creatures of Eternia. Engineered for death and destruction, Beastman serves as the red right hand of Skeletor, the overlord of evil. Be wary not to cross his path to Castle Greyskull, lest least he unleash his cruel whip and barbaric force upon you in battle. This is not a toy. Okay, well, I guess I'm not taking it in the bathtub tonight. I'm glad they said that there. But, of course, you got the Velcro. Oh, my gosh. Big Velcro box. Got that big glamour shot on the side. And, of course, you got the cellophane and everything. You really can't see the figure in there very well because it is so protected. But that is a good thing because this is an expensive figure. We don't want anything damaged. That is for sure out of the package. But I'm going to pull him out here. going to whip out my beast, man. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, my gosh. And I always tell you guys, I am not the best smeller out there. I can't usually smell. This is unbelievable, the paint. I'm going to get high off the fumes on this right now. Watch this. <laughs> oh, that all went in there. So that is very powerful paint smell. That means it's fresh, I guess. It's, it's super fresh from the factory is what this one is. But holy cow, does this have a potent order to it. You guys let me know if you're smelled uh, anything like that as well. Like I said, I'm going to save the box on this one. Got to protect the box at all costs. Definitely want to save all your Mondo boxes. But oh my goodness, we got a lot going on with this thing right here. And it looks like we got some more tapes. So we're going to look at these plastic trays. We're going to see what all the fuss is about here. And like I said, there is a plenty of fuss about this. No doubt about it. There we go. Cut that out. There's the first little plastic prison. All kinds of hands, the whip, the weapons. A lot going on in here. I'm here for that all day. And then what do we got going on here? We got the old beast. The beast of a man. I guess he's locked in the plastic prison. We'll have to fish him all out of here, I guess, what we'll have to do. But I'm going to take this offline, get everything out of this package here, and we'll be back talking all things Beast Man. 
All right, we got this beast of a man out of the package. And look how giant this looks right next to me. This thing is absolutely massive. Very, very cool. Like I said, Beast Man, a childhood favorite of mine. One I've been looking forward to Mondo doing. Saw it at PowerCon. Love at first sight. And here it is at the table. Coming to live with me for the rest of my life. And he's going to carry him around in like a baby Bjorn or something. Maybe I'll do that in the future. We'll see. But of course, we're going to dive into the accessories first. Then we'll dive into him. See what all the fuss is about. And oh, there's fuss. We know that. He does come with a stand, these typical Mondo doll stands. A bigger reinforced one here, at least on the floor parts. Got to have these. It's all about protection for your figures. You don't want this guy taking a header off anything and breaking an expensive figure, as we do know. But we do get the stand there, as usual. And how about we give him a hand? Oh, let's give him a hand here. He's got two splayed out hands out of the package on this side. Then we get a bevy. Yes, a bevy of hands right here. We get two fists of Beastman Fury here for that all day long. So we get two fists. Got to have those. Got two gripping hands. Of course, he can grip it and rip it and use some of his weapons he comes with. We'll get here into a second. So we got those. Two maniacal splayed out hands here. Like he's going to claw somebody. Like he's just going to take it to somebody uh, doing that. Maybe scratch somebody in the pool. You never know what he might be up to here. But definitely looking good. I love the black long fingernails on there. I love the fur on the top of the palms there. Just a beastly hand if there ever was one. And then we get into this one. A little bit of a handshaking hand. That's kind of what it looks like right here. A very interesting one. So we got a, a bevy of hands as I did say. Then we're going to get into some of his other accessories. And we do get a little blaster pistol and I don't think of Beastman usually using a pistol I think he did though in the cartoon I could be mistaken and spend some time but he just got a little bit of a futuristic pistol going on here even got a little bit of a dagger kind of thing holding on in the end there a little pointy end but definitely one that's been used a few times got some dings and dents got a dark wash against it it's almost could fit in my hand I could almost just quick draw you right here with this that's how big this is but it's gonna need to be big for this big figure here so we do get that. And of course, he is a beast man at the end of the day. And we get some bones with beast man. Look at this. So it's like a, I don't know what this would be, like a cow's head or something. He's got it wrapped up with a nice uh, rope around it. And then you got some femur bones, maybe. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know my bones. I just forgot. It's been a long time since high school in anatomy class. But we got three different sets of bones from beast man. Maybe he was eating these things out in the wild. Who knows what beast man's up to? He's a beast after all. Then we get his goblet. Oh, everybody loves a good goblet here. Big spider on there with a jewel. Kind of a goldish color. A little bit of darkness to it. A little worn in here as well with a dark watch on it. Very cool when Beastman wants to kick back uh, in the forest or whatever. He's taking a sip of something. Probably the blood of his fallen victims at the end of the day. But a big, big jar, cup, goblet for him right there. And then if you're going to drink something, you might as well eat something. He's got a big old... Is it a turkey leg? I don't even know what kind of leg this would be, but it is a big old leg here. Looks like something from Thanksgiving is what it looks like. It, it's actually the size of a real uh, drumstick chicken wing. I mean, that's what it looks like here. So if you went to Buffalo Wild Wings, shout out to Buffalo Wild Wings, you went there, you could have some of that on there. That's what it looks like to me. Now we're getting down to some weapons, and much like his pistol, we got a sword here. And I don't think of him using a sword either, but he is a beast man. It's a rudimentary weapon. You can see him using something like this, possibly. Got the brown on the handle looking good. You get a little bit of an ornate design there at the top. Then, of course, the silver blade with the point on the end. Looking good. Once again, dings and dents against it. Silver color. A nice big sword for a nice big figure. We're here for that. And then the most iconic weapon of Beastman is definitely this rope. And this feels like an amazing rope. Now it is kind of like a bendy wire, really. It's got a bend to it and it moves just like bendy wire. But it is very, very nice. Very ornate. Feels like real rope with a bendy wire inside. Very, very nice on this one. I am here for this. This is very, very nice. I thought it was just going to be like this. I was not realizing we had a bendy wire inside of it. Very, very nice, as it should be. This is a high-end collectible. It should be really nice. You got the handle down here in plastic. Of course, some of the rope wrapped around there. Very, very nice. And this is his number one weapon, if you ask me, for Beastman. I think most people would agree with that. But now we're going to get down to the business here. We're going to get down to the Beastman business. We're going to start with the head sculpts. We're going to go with the head that's out of the package first. 
Beast Man, somebody hands me this. I know who this is. Big old tusk coming out on the teeth. If you got the pink around the teeth, means he looks like and is meaning business. Even face paint. I don't think it is face paint, but I always think of it as face paint, like war paint on Beast Man. You got the white there. You got the blue. You got the bugged out eyes going on. You even got some of the red kind of veins in the eyes. I mean, it just looks like a guy that is just absolutely crazy. You would not want to mess with this guy. Big bushy beard around there. He does got some ears akin to an elf almost. Uh, and then he does got earrings in there. I wonder who put those on him. He's got earrings in both ears. And then he's got almost like a stegosaurus uh, back on the top of his head. So he's got some of that going. Of course, orange color throughout, looking very, very nice as well. No pain imperfections, no issues with the head sculpt on this one. Really, really thing of beauty there. But now we got some extra heads here. And we do get a, what is this one? What's the differences here? So it's a little bit more subdued one. We don't got the big crazy teeth on this, more inside. I mean, this kind of reminds you more of the original Beastman figure from back in the day. Kind of has that feeling to him. He looks like he's been uh, hanging out with Tommy Chong for a while or something. And who knows? Maybe he's been hanging out with Cheech and Chong. Because he does have a little bit of yellowness in his eyes. A very tired eyeballs in there. They're kind of just loopy there. So I don't know what's going on with him here. Same kind of head. Same kind of beard going. Not quite as bushy in the beard department. No earrings on this one. But a very good head. And gives me more of a classic flavor to Beastman right there. Then the third and final head. You know me. I'm here for an angry head. I love that. This is I'm ready for war beast man he's got one eye bigger than the other one a little crooked mouth a little bit the tusks showing the teeth showing in there and then the big old tongue you can see all the way inside he's got the earrings going the big bushy beard and then of course the same head we've got so a very very angry beast man right here that means business and unfortunately we did see this but no movable jaws in any of these ones would have been nice with this deluxe figure to have a little bit of movability in the jaw it's one of those things you just kind of assume that would be there on something like this that was not, who knows, maybe in the future they'll make an extra head with a movable jaw. Not in the cards this go around though, unfortunately for us. But now we're going to try to dive into this big Beast Man figure here. And man, oh man, is this thing just absolutely massive. Weighs a fortune. It like takes up the whole screen. It's just crazy how big this guy is. Of course, it's Beast Man. You got fur all over, a nice orange fur with a dark wash over the top. Just looks very much on point for Beast Man. We talked about these hands. We got two hands here. And this hand on this one here comes with a little bit of a knuckle duster type thing. Some spikes right on the top of the palm so this is one that really means business but you can switch in and out as we do know we also got little arm bracers here it's like he had cuffs on and he broke through and he even got some real fur which you know i'm here for real fur all day long he's got some real fur around these cufflinks on him then you get into his spikes of course very classic beast man we're aware of all the spikes he wears and he's got the spikes right up here on the arms now one thing that i have noticed is they do slide off if you just don't have them on there right you got to kind of pull them up and then turn them, uh, but they just do not stay on as well as I would like them to be. Uh, I thought maybe you could tighten them, but it doesn't seem to be the case. You're going to have to play around with it a little bit more, but they do slide down, as you can see right there. That is the most annoying thing I've noticed on this figure so far. Uh, that is just annoying how they just keep falling down on you and they kind of slide off. It almost reminds me of the Marvel Legends Cyclops with... Uh, those ankle bracers or I guess thigh bracers that always would fall off. He kind of has that going on with these. You just got to get it in there right and just kind of stick it in. But uh, it will fall off on you, so be careful there. He does got a little bandolier over the top looking very nice. And, of course, the big real fur over the top here. His big uh, apparatus over the top. Absolutely love this. Not sure what animal he skinned for this one, but I do love it. He's got the big old horns all over. He's got four horns in the back, two up front. He's seen some things. He's been in a battle or two. He's got broken horn right up there. Uh, not sure what happened. He's got two horns in the front. And he's got a nice chain medallion as well that is connected to all of this. Looking very nice in the blue medallion. The real chain holding it in. Very ornate. He, of course, does have the Eternia Championship belt. He's not giving it up for anyone. That is the case here. But he's got the belt spiked around there. Nice buckle as well. Got like a vinyl type loincloth going on. He didn't want to go real fur like the rest of Eternia. He wanted a little loincloth action right there. And then, of course, like a young Terry Steinbach, he's got the shin guards going on. Once again, spikes on there, a dark wash across it, nice red color, looking like he's ready for battle. He is a warrior at the end of the day, and he's going to protect his shins at all costs. It never feels good to get hit in the shins, let me tell you. 
Big old hairy feet with the big old toes down here, looking on point, looking on brand for old Beast Man. Now a little bit of the articulation here, I'm going to try to go through it without knocking these arm bracers off, but I think it'll be the case. The arms do go all the way around for us. There is a bicep cut. You do get single jointed elbows, very tight. You also get the side to side at the elbow. Hands removable, back, forth, side to side. Of course, head removable. Up, down, back and forth, side to side. Not tons and tons of movement, but just enough to be dangerous, I would say. And there goes that arm bracer again. That's my least favorite part of this figure so far, for sure. Uh, you do get a little bit of waist in there, a little bit of hula. Uh, no hula in here. I feel like I'm burping a baby or something. Who knows? But not a ton of movement in there, of course. Uh, it does have it in there, but it is pretty tight, I would say. Now, how about the splits? Now, he should be able to swing through the trees, has he got some splits going on? <laughs> Not really. Very, very tight. Got to heat these guys up. But he does got tight legs. They will go up. Not so much of a split. I mean, he's got a little bit in there, but he's not a deep, deep gymnast. He needs to work on his stretching a little bit more. You do got the double jointed knees. Once again, extremely tight. Might even heat these guys up. Yeah, very, very tight in the knee department. You always got to be careful. You don't want to push it with a figure like this, as you can imagine. Uh, you do get the ankles back and forth, up and down. No hole in his feet, so he's not going to be on any stand, but they did include that doll stand with him, as we do know. But a big, big bruiser. Now, can I get him to stand back up here? There it is, but holy cow, is this a big chunk of plastic? Is this a giant of a figure? Uh, and like I said, we saw it at PowerCon for the first time. You know how huge it is then. You see it, but it's not real until it's at your table right here, and you see him in the flesh right here, how big this figure is. Just an absolutely massive one. It'll be really interesting in the future if they make a Moss Man off of this, because that's what they did in the old school line. But I feel like Moss Man isn't as big as Beast Man. But I guess they did the same thing with Panthor and Battle Cat. We'll see how that ends up netting out in the future here. But this Beast Man could very well be the best Mondo figure so far. We've had some amazing ones, but man, there's something about a hairy bipedal creature, something about Beast Man that just stole my heart and never let go. And that's where we're at right here. Just a gigantic piece of plastic. Definitely looks awesome. Definitely intimidating. And it's one of those figures that catches your eye. You're like, holy cow, what is this? Uh, and you're direct into it. If you don't uh, collect figures or something, you see something, this is one that'll catch your eye at the end of the day. There's no doubt about it. But of course, I did grab Battle Cat here. So you can kind of see that difference in size between Battle Cat. And I know in some of the promotional images, they showed these two kind of side by side together. But you can see this. They are very, very close to the same size. Both big, big chunks of plastic. I mean, that's an epic battle if there ever was one. Cat versus Beast, who do you got? I'm putting my money on the Beast Man, that's for sure. He's not messing around. He's got weapons, that's for sure as well. So a big, big bruiser of a figure. Welcome in my collection. I just got to figure out where the heck I'm going to put him. I'm still up in the air where I'm going to put my Mondo figures, but I'll figure it out. I always do eventually. Just stay tuned, I guess, in the future for a future collectibles tour on the channel. But Beastman, Mondo, dare I say, pretty close to a perfect figure. And it should be at the price point. It should have every bell and whistle, and it really, really does. A fun figure, a highly recommended figure. Uh, if you got it, you know exactly what I mean, I think. But you guys in the comments, tell me your thoughts. What about this Beastman? Is this here for you? Are you here for a Beastman like this? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Of course, if you made it this far, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bell as we got videos every single day and then some. And of course, we've got two YouTube channels. Make sure you subscribe to both of those videos every single day. You also get early access to both those channel videos over on Patreon. Among many other things, Patreon, the best place to support the channel. You can also support the channel at .com. Search Kyle Peterson. And don't forget about Amazon and Barnes & Noble for my book here. It just recently came out, The Complete History of the Jax Classic Superstars Toy line almost 700 pages in this book everything and anything classic superstars absolutely love this a passion project if there ever was one hopefully those that got it are enjoying it a lot of fun right here in this book and of course social media sir paul 64 on the x the underscore kyle underscore peterson on threads and on instagram so for mondo's beast man and battle cat 2 i'm kyle see you guys all real soon